So how much should you be paying for your outsourced labour? Um, it depends what they're doing and depends how many you're employing. I mean, for example, with us, we employ 45 people. 45 people, it's not just about the pay, it's about creating a working environment that is happy. Filipinos are generally happy people, they perform better in happy environments. So you incentivize it with days out, you um, do a lot of stuff that is just, may seem a bit strange to Western business, but at the same time, it's what makes people happy. Um, what's an example? Uh, like birthday cakes, bringing in birthday cakes and having McDonald's for everybody. It's it's those sort of things that are just done on without anybody knowing. It's just sort of this stuff turns up and then everyone's a big surprise. Uh, people love all that stuff. Same as we have some pretty big days out or what we're used to. Um, but the average person is going to be employing about probably three people, one person or whatever. If you only have an one, three people, whatever. You need to understand the person. A lot of the time they have a lot of family commitments which are a pain in the backside for a lot of people because they've gone so you got nagging. You know, if they were working from home, for example, they're like, can you take me to work? Can you do this? Can you do that? Can you make sure they've constantly got people bugging them? Um, and it's the same in the West. So you've got to be aware of this stuff as well. The if they're working from home, you may actually be better off investing a little bit more in getting them a seat in like a call center or somewhere that is just a quiet working environment. I mean, for example, my center's, uh, because it's currently uh, mothballed, there's 15 seats sat there, um, all set up. There's 15 PCs, wide screens, a lot. It's all, it's all there, but it's basically the door's locked until I go back to Cebu. Um, but I'm looking for somebody that's actually capable of utilizing that space um, that I can trust which is the very hard bit um, because everything's already there the facilities the desk the lot um, but the, the, the important bit here is people need a good working environment if they haven't got that then everything else is sort of not going to work you get people that are asked to do something and a month later still got nothing one of my guys did it to me, and I know he's doing his master's degree at the moment, but I know it's more to do with his family than it is to do with the college stuff. He just doesn't get left alone to do it, because he goes to college, does his um, stuff at college, comes home, and gets into the family stuff, and never gets around to the job that actually pays him. Um, but the, the problem you get is things like that. So if you can actually utilize a little bit of budget to say right i'll get you a working space and then make sure they're there that's the other thing is you you turn around and say well i need you to skype me at 9 a.m filipino time so i can see you're sat at the desk and then i want you to do it at 3 p.m and 5 p.m that way he can actually turn around and say to his family he watches me i can't because I'll tell you now, they'll just say, well, just tell them you're going. I know they do it, because this is what families do. And you, you need to stop that happening. I know it sounds like a pain in the backside for you, but it, this is the stuff that really happens, and this is why things often don't get done. Um, now, the cost of labour, I would base it on what the market's paying, and that varies considerably because there's a lot of sharks in the water because um, for example if you go direct you're not having to pay the the fees that a broker's charging or a call center agent uh, team leaders charging etc because you can come in a little bit lower at the same time you have to question is it better to pay a little bit more and have them inside a call center because they'll absorb some of that cost it's up to you. Um, now, rates-wise, I wouldn't pay anybody less than 300 for a basic call center agent uh, per day. And I wouldn't... Uh, well, I probably... Yeah, that's my actual minimum, actually. 300 a day is for my trainees. Um, but then I would add a little bit extra. If you're doing stuff like graphics design, base it on a time scale per graphic so for example if they say it's two days and that's coming in at 600 pesos i recommend giving them 900 on completion 
that way there's a bit more incentive in there for you because uh, they'll do it but you're not going to lose out by paying them an extra day's pay for if you know because if it's only 600 it's not a lot of money even in the Philippines um, but with graphic stuff you need to drive it based on time scales micromanage it a little bit break it down into structured times you know this will take two days this will be three hours blah 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 you need to break it down if you don't you'll find that half the stuff never gets done if you're doing telemarketing telesales etc base it on a basic level then sales incentives um, that worked marvelously for me and to be honest if you've taken the stress of no pay off an agent they perform a lot better but also if you give them a basic pay that's worth actually turning up to work for they will turn up to work if they actually turn around and get this and then they get a few sales on it they start smelling the money and will chase the money that works um, what I would recommend is an incentive system and I know a lot of call centers go well we want X amount per hour it becomes very difficult to work with because you don't know what agents they put on because they do move agents around as well they don't tell you this but they will put trainees in amongst your agents because you'll suddenly see a dip in your sales targets it's because they've put some trainees on at your cost and, and not told you um, so the other thing is knowing your agents if they're your agents say it right I want to Skype each one talk to each person just so I know who they are and then go okay I recognize their voices so if you ask for recordings for example and hear some voices you don't recognize you know they swap some agents around because um, they will still log in as the same people obviously but the quality won't be there um, now for the a for the cost of a telemarketing telesales agent like I says 300 minimum per day and then per sale lead if they're coming in at a certain amount per hour I would recommend probably about four four dollars fifty an hour minimum um, upwards uh, that's what the call centers will charge you um, I can't say go under that because you'll find it's in somebody's backyard and the quality is probably going to damage your reputation more than you're actually going to generate in sales um, if they're a seasoned one that's set up on their own you're going to get the performance but are only up to a certain point because then they'll start bringing in new blood and as they add more people the quality declines a little bit while everyone's getting on the training so you need to sit there and assess what quality is coming through you need to spend time hearing the agents understanding the agents do they understand what they're actually selling because for solar panels my agents didn't even know what a solar panel was they never seen them in the Philippines so I had to spend a bit of time explaining what solar panels were and how they worked and why you use them and because they had no product knowledge because like our clients ain't asking do you know what a solar panel is they just want you to sell them so you have to invest a bit of time and this is why it's worth even you investing time with the people saying right let's have a seminar or I'll do a YouTube video on it and then you can understand what we're selling what the product is etc any questions just ask me or get your supervisor to ask me etc so that yeah I know you know what we're doing all worth the investment really is um, now cost wise like I says you're gonna get call centers 450 upwards can you work for less than that I would say give me a call first because um, the thing with me is I've got the got my space that's mothballed like I said I'm looking for somebody to actually use it operate it and just give me a fee every month um, so as long as I'm making money on it I'm not too fast but I can help you get the thing up and running and making me money and making you money so from that point of view there's other alternatives which is where I say about partnering because I know a friend of mine set up a couple of call centers in the Philippines for companies in the US he's actually gone there done all the um, computers done the training did the um, interviews got the people hired got it up and running got the managers in etc etc then took a back seat um, because obviously they don't want to keep paying a western salary long term but the 
like to utilize him while he was there um, just to get things moving hope this helps and I know I didn't give too much direct pricing it's because you need to look at what you think is sensible um, because I know some people will actually turn around and undercut themselves but if they offer you like oh I'll do it for a dollar an hour be aware that probably in a week or two they'll give up and go elsewhere where they can get more money there is just no point in doing it too cheap. Hi, right, thanks for watching.